Check it out, Casper! Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Casper here, and there is a massive weapon changes update coming to Team Fortress 2. In theory today, at least that's in Valve time. Now unfortunately, I am going to be probably asleep if it comes out when they say it's going to come out. So I wanted to do this video talking about the buffs and nerfs that are coming now, and then I'll do a video actually demonstrating the things on the weekend. So as this is primarily a spy channel, I'm going to talk over some of the spy changes first. There are some drastic changes that are in these notes, and there will be a link to these notes so you can read all the spy ones and all the other ones that are in there. Just starting at the top of the list, Spy no longer smacks himself in the face when reloading a revolver. So what this means is the revolver reload animation that so many scripts have come out of to make that hide when you try and reload, because basically it completely obscures your screen when it's reloading. So you, if you're trying to shoot someone a few times and you've got auto reload on, you can't necessarily see that target. So now there's going to be some new reload animation that doesn't obscure your screen, which means all those crazy scripts that are out there are no longer needed, and that is incredible. Changing to a new disguise while already under a disguise takes 0.5 seconds instead of the normal disguise time of 2 seconds. This is a flat buff. What this basically means is if you don't have any disguise on, so if you're just your normal, your normal spy, and then you disguise, that takes 2 seconds. That's the normal amount of time. But if you are already disguised as a scout, say, and then you want to switch to a soldier disguise, that's only going to take a quarter of the amount of time that that normally would take. So that's a nice little buff and it makes the sort of how you're supposed to play spy. You're meant to be changing your disguise all the time. You're meant to be playing tactically. You're meant to be sort of adapting to the situation. This is sort of facilitating the way that you're supposed to play Spy, so that is a great little buff. While invisible, Spy receives 20% less damage from all sources. Wow, that is a huge buff. And it does go on later to sort of um, make that buff less significant, but this is applying to the Cloak and Dagger and the Invisi Watch. So normally those don't have any damage resistance. Now they've got 20% damage resistance, essentially, while you are invisible with those watches. That is something really good, and it really improves the viability of those watches. Just going to put a quick note in here why I think the Dead Ringer is so overused. I don't think it's overpowered at all, and, and the reason is that Team Fortress 2 is a really spammy game. There's a lot of stuff that you can accidentally hit by, not by any, not by you doing anything wrong, or not by that person trying to hit you. It just happens, which is why the Dead Ringer sort of works in most situations. But this now is sort of making the other watches more viable. If you do get hit by a stray sort of explosion from a rocket, it's not going to absolutely wreck you like it might normally. While invisible, spies reduce time on debuffs. Fire, Jurati, Milk, Bleed. That's really interesting. Again, it's a straight buff. There's no sort of downside to that at all. Basically means if you're invisible and you're on fire, it's not going to last as long. If you're Jurati, it's not going to last as long, etc. It doesn't actually say what the amount of that timer is, so that will be interesting to test. But it's a straight buff, and again, it's promoting you to play Spy like you're supposed to. Decrease the damage penalty on sentries sat by the Spy from 66% to 33%. So what that's basically saying is whilst the sentry is being sapped, it actually takes less damage, which I, I honestly I didn't know that. But what this is saying now is that... It will con continue to take less damage, but not as much. So normally it would take 66% less damage. Now it's only going to take 33% less damage. While that's sort of a spy upgrade, it's actually an upgrade for all classes. It's an upgrade to the sapper, but it will benefit anyone who's attacking a sentry. So now we're on to weapon specifics. Spicicle. Change fire immunity for 3 seconds to 1 second and 7 seconds of afterburn immunity. Now this is a bit weird. I don't know if that means that you're going to continue to get hurt by the fire for seven seconds, but you won't catch on fire. I'm not really sure what this one means, so that will be interesting to test once the update drops. Remove the silent killer attribute. Whoa, this is a complete nerf. I don't understand why they're doing this. I like the silent killer attribute, and to be honest, I find that more useful than the fire resistance. So, I'm a bit disappointed by that, and that's definitely going to reduce the amount that I use this bicycle, unless that first one turns out to be something really awesome. The Spicicle Recharger Timer can now be reduced by picking up ammo boxes. Really interesting, the same way that your cloak refills if you're using the Dead Rainer on the Invisi Watch. And in fact, I'll just get onto a little bit later, also with the Cloak and Dagger. But now when you pick up ammo, your Spicicle will recharge. That is interesting, I think that's a nice little buff. Again, a complete buff, no nerf properties to that. But it'll be interesting to see how much that actually applies. Enforcer, <laughs> I like the way they phrase this. Change 20% plus damage bonus while undisguised to 20% plus damage bonus while disguised. Now you're only going to get that damage bonus for one shot, and then you've got a disguise again, which is going to take, as we saw earlier, at least two seconds. So I really don't see any use for this weapon. I can't see that being like a buff nor a nerf. It's sort of, it's more of a nerf, really, and hardly anyone uses that anyway, even though it is quite powerful, but I just don't think anyone's going to use it now. 
Big Una added a three second speed gain on kill. Hooray, they've done something to the Big Una. But a speed gain? Uh, maybe? I, I, I still think it's not going to be that useful. Now the Kunai has had three buffs and they might make it a little bit more viable. 70 health is now the base health that you will have. At minimum you will gain 75 health on kill. So normally you would sort of leech from your enemy and what you got depended on your enemy's health. But now, say if the enemy only had 2 health and you killed them, you would still get 75 back. So that is a great thing. And on top of that, the maximum overheal has been increased by 15 health points. It might not sound like much, but 15 will very often be the difference between life and death in Team Fortress 2. So I'm very excited to give this a go. On to the last two points now. Cloak and Dagger can now pick up ammo kits for the cloak meter while visible. Previously could not pick up ammo packs for cloak. Cloak gain is at a reduced rate when compared to the stock in Vos Watch on ammo pickup. So now, you can pick up ammo and it will refill your cloak and dagger. That is really cool. And it does say it's not going to refill you as much as the Invisi Watch. So if I recall correctly, Invisi Watch, a medium ammo pack is 50%, a full ammo pack is 100%. We don't know exactly how much the difference is going to be, but it's a straight buff. They're not taking any properties away from the Cloak and Dagger. So I thought the Cloak and Dagger was a reasonably viable watch anyway. So this is just making it a little bit more usable. And ultimately, I think both this change and the change we mentioned earlier on, the 20% damage reduction for all watches, is all because of the Dead Ringer. I think they're trying to address that point that I sort of brought up earlier, that the Dead Ringer isn't overpowered, it's just more useful. So what they're trying to do is make the other watches useful and make the Dead Ringer still useful, but not as much. So here's all the changes to the Dead Ringer. A feigning death instantly removes 50% cloak. Complete nerf, not cool. Change the increased drain rate to a decreased drain rate. Overall duration of invisibility is still seven seconds while accounting for the initial 50 cloak, blah, blah, blah. So what that's saying is now your cloak is going to drain 50% straight away. However, it's gonna go down that last 50% a little bit slower. So you will be cloaked for the same amount of time, but what this is actually doing now, it's stopping you uncloaking and then being able to recloak again so soon. Decrease the cloak regen rate from 80% to 50%. As I just said, this is stopping you cloaking again so soon, even more so. I'm just going to skip ahead to the last bullet point here. Can no longer pick up ammo from cloak meter while cloaked. Again, that is stopping you dead ringing again so soon. So this is a horrible nerf. This is almost completely changing the way that the dead ringer works. Everything I do with the dead ringer is automatic. I don't think about it. I know roughly how much ammo I've got to pick up before it's full. I don't count that. I just know that from feeling, from playing the game so much. And this has completely changed that. I'm, I'm primarily a dead ringer user so this is you know it's not horrible I don't think that I'm being cheated here but I do think I've got to completely relearn this when feign death is triggered the spy receives a three second speed boost um I suppose what they're trying to make you do dead ringer has sort of become a, a shield people are using it so aggressively like a shield you shoot someone you pull up your dead ringer you pick up an ammo on the floor and you can undead ring shoot them again and pretty much cloak again before they can kill you and they're trying to stop this they're trying to say look the Den Ringer is a weapon you're supposed to use in a desperate situation and then you run away. So that's just what the speed boost is. This is why it takes so long for your cloak to come back. They want you to get away, get out of the situation, have your cloak come back and then get back into the fray. Initial attack that triggers feigned death has its damage reduced by 50%. Damage resistance on triggering feigned death scales over time, 65 to 20% over 3 seconds. Whether this is a buff or a nerf, I'm not 100% sure. Although I suppose it will depend because the current um, resistance effect is based on how much damage you've taken. Now this is based over time, so if in those last 4 seconds of your cloak, i.e. after that first 3 seconds you get hit, that is only going to do 80% damage as opposed to whatever the max resistance was before. Feign death has no bump shimmer. That's currently the truth for the entire duration of the um, dead ring. So if you bump into someone at any point whilst cloaked with your dead ringer, they don't see you shimmer like they would with the cloak and dagger or the invisi watch. Now that's only going to last for three seconds, so that's a little bit of a nerf. And that's what the next point clarifies. Three seconds after triggering feign death, the spy is under normal invisible conditions. So here is that 20% armor and shimmering if bumped or shot. So this is a nerf in all accounts. It completely changes the way that it works. It's, it's, it's changing the way that you've got to think about using the dead ring. And this is going to lead to some very interesting, basically a new meta almost for at least the dead ringer and spy. So hopefully this update is going to drop tonight. Um, as I said, I will be asleep and unfortunately Fridays are a busy night for me. So I won't be able to make any videos tomorrow, but Saturday night, Sunday, 
and hopefully uh, next week I'm going to try and put out as many videos, at least relevant videos, I'm not just going to make them for the sake of it, but I'm going to make as many videos as I can, sort of showcasing, testing all these changes and seeing how they're going to affect Spy specifically, as I said, this is a Spy main channel, I didn't even read out a quarter of the changes, there are so many changes that are affecting all the classes, so go read that list of changes that's coming, and if you are interested, of course, in seeing my videos on these changes, make sure you stick around, and yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys on the other side.